Hi, today I'm going to go over 1.5, graphing linear functions and inequalities. So today's goal is you'll graph linear functions, we'll graph inequalities with two variables. Um, when you have an inequality, let me move my mouse, with one variable, that's a number line. Remember, x greater than 5, that's just an open dot at 5. That's one variable. But in two variables, which I'll go through these, we have a line and we have some shading. So a linear inequality is when you have an inequality symbol and you're graphing it. A boundary is the edge of that inequality, a closed half plane, and we're gonna go through all these, of course, more is when you have a solid line and then shading above or below. This one I graph below, but closed is inequality that is less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. An open half plane is a dashed line and you still have all your shading. It's called a half plane, but it may not be exactly half of what we're shading in here, but if you think of geometry turns, the plane, the coordinate plane, goes on forever. And so we're using a line, solid or dash, to divide that. And so an open half plane is used with less than or greater than. Constraints we'll learn about. And let's get started. Okay, so first they will go over using a table. It's your choice if you want to use a table. One thing you do need to understand that every line has an infinite number of points. So just because we didn't put 0.25 in for X, there's still a value for Y on that line. So they wanna get Y by itself because we have our X values and solving for the other variable when it's in this format isn't easy. So we're gonna move six over past the equals the x over, and we're going to get 3y equals negative x plus 6. Remember when it crosses the equals, that changes the sign. So then we're going to divide by 3 because we want 1y, and we get y equals negative 1 third, because there's 1 over 3, x plus 2. And they already have it graphed. Um, but you could get these values from the line or what they want you to do is plug in negative six. One third of negative one third of six is two, two plus two is four. Negative three, negative one third of negative three is a one, one plus two is three. Zero, zero is easy because you just ignore that and you have two. 3, negative 1 third times 3 is negative 1, plus 2 is 1. And then 6, 1 third of 6 is 2, but it's a negative. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And they've already plotted those points there. We will do some that we plot in just a minute. Let me zoom in a little more. Okay, so let's do this one. They want us to use a table. So again, this is standard form. Uh, something x plus something y is a number. So to do the table, we have the x values, we have to get y. So I get 2y equals, again, only the 6x crosses. So it's going to be negative 6x plus 10. Now we're going to divide by 2. We get y equals negative 3x plus 5. So we're using the table, so let's use the table and then plot the points, negative one. So negative one times negative three is three. So three plus five is eight. I'm gonna do y over here. Zero, zero is easy, you just ignore the x. So zero plus five is five. One, negative three plus five, that's a plus, it looks like a four, is two. And the last one, three. Negative three times three is negative nine plus five is negative four. So we're gonna plot this these values. At negative one, we are at eight, which is way up here. Zero, we're at five. One, we are at two. 
and three we are at negative four. One, two, three, four. So there is our line. We know these are lines and not any shading because it is equal to. So that's with a table. If you want to fill out a table, I would say always have some negative values, some positive, and zero. Zero is just the easiest to plug in usually. So now we're going to graph using intercepts. This again is standard form. Standard forms a number x plus a different number y equals a different number. And when it is written in standard for it form, it's really easy to find your x and y intercepts. So to find your x intercept, we know y is 0. So plug in 0. But looking at this one right here, well, I'm going to look at this one right here, 0. So if I plug in 0 for y, you could just ignore that y, and you get 3x equals negative 12. So this goes away and I get 3x equals negative 12. So divide by 3 and x equals negative 4. And likewise for the y-intercept, you put a 0 for x, but I'm showing you on this one because it's a little bigger. So when we put a 0 for x, that goes away and we get negative 2y equals negative 12. So y equals 6. So we have two points here. They're not written as coordinate points, but those are two points and that's all you need for a graph. And they continue on the next page, negative four and six. So negative four is negative four, zero, six is zero, six. So you go to negative four, one, two, three, four, five, six, and draw your line. Okay, so the last way they go through, so that's really great with standard form without having to get y by itself. Um, last thing is slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Here's one already written in that format. So your b is negative four, your m, which is your slope, is a positive three halves. So B starts on the Y on negative 4. So you go to negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a dot. That's where you begin on the B. And then a slope of positive 3 halves. Remember, we had to do the change of Y over the change in X. So we're going to change y 3, positive 3, 1, 2, 3 up, and change x 2, positive, which is 2 to the right. Put a dot, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So I was able to put two other points and draw your line. That's what they are doing. From the y-intercept, move up 3 and right 2 and plot a point at 2, negative 1. And then from 2, negative 1, move up 3, right 2, and put a point on 4, 2, and draw your line. OK, now we're getting into inequalities. So inequalities with two variables, we're going to have a line component, which may be solid or dashed and that is your boundary. And then you're gonna have this shaded area, which is your half plane. Um, sometimes the shading part, when we have the coordinate plane, doesn't look like half, but it is half plane. So a closed half plane is a solid line, and you use those symbols, that is a closed half plane. And an open half plane uses less than or greater than, Oh, and it's not a solid line. It is a dashed line. So open half plane. A constraint is a condition that a solution must satisfy. So a constraint is all the possible answers that satisfy the equation. Each solution represents a possible option that satisfies the constraint. So let's graph this. 
they give it to us like this, which is not any particular form. But one thing before we start working with inequalities is you need to remember, you need to flip less than or greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to an inequality symbol when you multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay, you need to remember that. So this one we start off with the 12 moves over there becomes negative, but this negative 4y is going to cause this symbol to go from greater than to less than. But we have to divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. This is 1. So it's negative one fourth x. There is our slope. There is our y-intercept. Since it is less than and not less than or equal to, we have to draw a dashed line. So come over here to one, two, three, your y-intercept. We go down one, right four, because down is negative, right is positive. You could also go up one, left 4, because 4 to the left is negative. So that's 1 positive over negative 4. You could graph it either way, just as long as you put a dashed line. Sorry, I'm not using a ruler. Now, in order to know the boundary of the graph is this. This is the boundary, because the symbol is inequal as greater than it is dashed. Now our final symbol was less than, but our initial symbol was greater than. And when you get to this point, you need to read this out loud to yourself. So that doesn't make sense, but in your own head, I guess, without saying it out loud. Why less than all of this? So where is y less than? Well, y is less than right here. So all of this is shaded below the dashed line. So that means any number, I'm trying to get as close as I can without going over. Any number in this shaded area is good. It should satisfy that original inequality. The any number on the dashed line sh should not satisfy. It is not part of the solution, but any number in here. So since 0, 0, the origin is in our solution, if you plug in 0, 0 to test it, so that gives me 4 times 0 is greater than 0. 0 just makes that go away. 12 greater than 0, yes. And that is true, and our shaded area is um, does contain 0, 0. So that's good. Let's go to closed half plane. So here is our inequality. Right now I could see y is positive, so I don't have to worry about flipping anything. But the 9 goes over here, so it's minus 9. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. I get negative 9 divided by 3 is 3. 8 thirds is my slope. So the line is the boundary and it's solid. The other one, our line was our boundary and it was dashed. So y less than or equal to 8 thirds minus 3. So this inequality, y less than or equal to 8 thirds x minus 3. So you go to negative 3 on the y. Our slope is positive 8, positive 3, so go up 8. That's 3, 4, 5. There's 8. Oops, don't put a dot. Sorry. I'm going to do that. Now we have a solid line because we have a less than or equal to. Whenever you have a line there, you're going to have a solid line. If you don't have this line underneath, it's a dash. So now reading that out loud, y is less than or equal to. So y is less than, it's not very long, but it is right there, less than. 
So your shading is underneath all of that. Now, zero, zero is not within our solution. So if I plug in zero, zero, it should not be true. So I'm going to plug in nine plus three times zero is like eight times zero. So this goes away and this is just zero. So nine is less than zero, false, and it's not shaded. So we are good. All right, that is it for lesson five. Um, this is all things you should have done in Algebra 1 a couple years ago. But your assignment is page 43, and I want you to graph 5 through 26. The way they're telling you to do it, it makes things a little easier, especially the x and y intercepts one. You could ignore one and do the find the two points. Um, like I showed you in the video, y equals mx plus b is already in a good format for you. And then the inequality is 26. So 5 to 26. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.